How are you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji. Welcome to another episode of On The Line. Guys, check out the Vision 22 shirt. If you guys uh, get a chance, please check out the other videos that we do have on the Guardian RFID YouTube channel. Today's going to be a great episode. <clears throat> We're going to be talking about dealing with a disrespectful inmate. Now, I'm actually going to forward the show over to a retired lieutenant, Joe Papagno, and he's going to give us three tips on dealing with a disrespectful inmate. Now, be advised, Joe's got many years in the business. Uh, he made it all the way up to lieutenant, and he retired from the TDCJ. So that's the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. So let me just make sure I can get Joe on. What's up, Joe? Hey, Anthony. How's it going, brother? Good, brother. So I'm going to forward the show over to you. you mind introducing yourself and then going right into those tips? Absolutely. Good evening, everybody. I'm Joe Pomponio. I'm a retired lieutenant with the uh, Texas Department of Criminal Justice, uh, retired after 30 years with a uh, uh, achieving a rank of lieutenant, and I'm currently uh, hanging out with Anthony Ganji, living the big dream and living the show. Um, when we're talking about dealing with a disrespectful inmate, uh, you know, the, the first thing you want to you want to consider and the first thing is, is keeping yourself under control. You know, when you get a call, you know, that, that officer is calling you on the radio and you get that call that you got one that's out of hand and you don't know, you know, what the, the actual situation is. Keep yourself under control. Keep your keep your emotions in check. Keep your adrenaline under control uh, until you get there. See, you know, fill out the whole situation and see what you got. Obviously, everybody's dealt with the loud and uh, loud offender at one point in time in their career. Um when you approach a situation, just make sure that, you know, you keep yourself in check because everybody around you is going to is going to spawn off of your emotions and and your actions, um, you know. And then when you're dealing with the offender. You also got to take it into consideration your surroundings, your environment, nine times out of ten, when you have an offender who's being verbal. Uh, verbally aggressive towards your officer, towards you, towards anybody. Nine times out of ten, he's in he's in front of a crowd of his peers, and you know they tend to they tend to charge up the environment, and a lot of times that can make the situation worse because the initial aggression of the offender might not have had the intent of going as far as he did, but because he had he had his uh, his peers of homeboys behind him. Uh, you know, that that may lead him in a different path. So it's always, always, always important. Number one, secure the area. If you can't secure the area immediately, secure the offender and take him to a different area where he's out of that situation and where you're out of that situation. Because not only is he in danger of getting himself into, into worse trouble, it's also putting you in danger of getting hurt. So definitely control your environment. Make sure that your surroundings are, are safe and secure. And then finally, you know, once you either get the the scene safe enough to where you can actually deal with the situation, that's when you start dealing with the offender. Uh, you know, you either get the area secured or you take him somewhere where he's not in front of his peers, where he's not being led by peer uh, influence or peer pressure, uh, you know, just being charged up by other people, you know, uh, what they call the electrician. Then you deal with the offender. Again, you know, the, the main... The main goal is de-escalation. You know, not you don't you don't charge into a situation looking to have a use of force right off the bat. So you know, de-escalation is a priority. Control the inmate. Control yourself. Listen to both sides. You know, nine times out of ten, you know the offender just wants to be heard. Once you hear them, they tend to calm down after that point. But until that, you know, make sure he's secured. Keep him controlled. Maintain a safe distance, you know, don't let them up in your proximity and at the same time, don't, don't, you know, get up in his proximities. Hear him out, control the offender. And, you know, once he gets his grievance off his chest, nine times out of 10, they'll calm down. And, you know, it, it, it turns into a whole, a whole different scenario than when it first started. Thanks, Joe. I just wanted to, get some tips from someone who's been in the field. And now that you recently retired, you can speak the truth. 
<laughs> now I got to practice my de-escalation, my de-escalation techniques on my animals. Yeah, and I'll tell you something, guys. <clears throat> that that advice does work wonders. You don't want to deal with an irate inmate if you yourself are emotional, because if you can't control yourself, there's no way you can control the inmate. And then again, even in the environment, you know, you're trying to get the inmate to do what needs to be done to calm down. But if they're in an environment that's a counter influence to that, it's wasted energy. It's wasted effort. Uh, so I always found it best to remove the inmate from anything that would support negative behavior. And then you find out you get a totally different inmate. And it's a great way to also get that respect going because having a, a nice dialogue, definitely controlled, don't get me wrong, but in a more isolated setting, not in front of the other inmates, that's key. You wind up building a, a better rapport or relationship with that inmate uh, because, again, there's no counter influence to what it is that you are expecting that inmate to do. So uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Joe. Hey, Joe, any final thoughts before we sign off here? Uh, yeah. I mean, like I said, just make sure, you know, it, it, once the situation occurs, the adrenaline starts flowing, it's natural. It happens. You know, uh, some people, some people get twitchy, some people shake, you know, take that uh, before you walk into a situation, take that breath, calm yourself down, make sure that you're in control because if you're not in control, then nobody else around you is going to be in control. Do it, do it the right way, do it safely and try to deescalate things when you can, because I'm telling you, uh, as you get older, you find out it's it's the best path the the best path of, of resistance to have. Best advice there, guys. If you haven't, make sure you subscribe to this channel, Guardian RFID, and please check out the other content here, guys. We promote a lot of content here that really does uh, help out those that work in the corrections profession. So, as always, guys, again, the show is on the line. Please stay safe.